In this issue of Heroes, Villains, and Artists, the brothers Hildebrandt, I'm sure you know their work. Classic illustrators from Star Wars to Lord of the Rings. Until Tim's untimely death in June of 2006, these lifelong comic book fans have created a legendary body of work, both together and individually. Greg Hildebrandt continues to produce amazing art, and we caught up with him in his New Jersey studio. Heroes, Villains, and Artists with Greg Hildebrandt starts now. My name is Greg Hildebrand, and uh, I'm an artist. I was talking to my mother. She said she could see that my brother and I both were able to stay focused at two years old in drawing. So I'd say around two, we probably started to draw. I never made a decision to be an artist. It was just there, this obsession or compulsion to to draw, to make things, to build, to, to design. The way I always kind of like think about it, it chose me, I didn't choose it. It's kind of unusual growing up on the east side of Detroit in a blue collar world, we would be more pragmatic about settling on a job of some kind. But our parents completely let us go and in fact supplied us with, uh, our dad worked at GM in the stock room. He started as a stock boy and then worked his way up to head of office supply for Chevy. So we had this constant supply of raw material. We had packed piles of paper, that you, so you never had to stint on drawing. You could just draw and draw and draw and draw. And our mother was always very big on fostering our imaginations. I mean, that was the big, that, that, that one word from my past, from my mother is, use your imagination. Use your imagination. Like, don't, and, and don't follow the crowd. Don't do it because everybody else is doing it, you know? Just think for yourself, do your own thing. We saw a 1975 calendar by an artist named Tim Kirk, who, uh, and on the back of that calendar, there was a little kind of like blurb or an ad. They were asking for artists who were interested in illustrating The Lord of the Rings to contact them. So we called the art director, Ian Summers, and he saw us and he liked what he saw. So they, they hired us to do a uh, children's book of Tolkien. So they kind of like gave us that to see, you know, if we would work out for this, uh, you know, genre. They liked it, and then they gave us the uh, first 1976 calendar to do. We had six months to paint uh, 14 paintings. Tim had read the book already. I, I, then I read The All of the Rings, and as we read it, we just marked off scenes that we wanted to illustrate, and we got thousands of them, you know? And we applied a certain kind of logic to choosing the scenes. You know, good guys, bad guys, exteriors, interiors, warm lighting, cool lighting, and posed models, made costumes, took photographs, uh, and then did the final drawings and paintings in, in a six month period. And that, that hit, people liked it, they sold a lot of the calendars, so they gave us the contract for the next year. And so we did three calendars that way. And they kept selling more and more each year. So it starts as a discussion, you know, arriving at what it is precisely. Let's. These are the scenes that we're, we're specifically going to do, and that's that's and that's a conversation. And but we have been now, you know, doing this since we were two years old. So it's almost nonverbal in a lot of ways. We both kind of knew our each other's minds, and we both knew what to arrive at. So it's kind of like, you know, almost uh, psychic to some degree. There was never any arguing ever on over this stuff. It was like we both kind of like had the same eye, set of eyeballs. I mean, we both grew up on the same stuff. We, when we said, well, this will be a warm light coming from this angle, we knew exactly what that meant. Or this will be a cool light coming from, we knew exactly what that color would be in our, in our mind's eye, you know? And so we're kind of like operating as uh, monitors of each other at the same time, you know, getting things fine-tuned. Then we would have the palette between us. There would be, a, I'm sitting here, there's a palette, and Tim is sitting there, and we, we're painting together on, on the painting. Room. This small ad agency in Manhattan, John and Murray. We walked into John and Murray's uh, office, and they had all these scenes, these black and white 8x10s of, out of Young Frankenstein. 
and I, I didn't know anything about Young Frankenstein yet. We looked at it, I said, what the hell is this? And he said, oh, it's Mel Brooks, he's doing Young Frankenstein, it's gonna be in black and white. I said, wow, this is fantastic. We gotta do one. And he said, well, we, the budget's all used up and, and all this art's being shipped out tomorrow. It's gotta, be, it's gotta be shipped to California tomorrow. And I said, I don't care. We'll go home and we'll do a picture and we'll bring it back. And the guy said, well, and I said, well, we don't have any money. I said, well, I don't care, we'll, we'll, we wanna do it. So Tim and I did. They liked it, but it gave too much of the plot line away. So it didn't get used. But the point is that now, several years go by, and these, I get this phone call from, from John and from John and Marie, and he says, you guys gotta help us out. We got a movie here, and, and, and the director's got a poster he's not happy with, and he needs it right away, and you know, the film's coming out in nine days. You, you gotta come in and help us out. And I said, what is it? He goes, oh, it's a science fiction film of some kind. They've never, never seen the film. Right? So we, we said, okay, we got on the train, went into the city, and they showed us all these, you know, eight by 10 black and whites out of the film, gave us a clue as to what they wanted, more or less, and uh, we went home and worked around the clock, literally, on, on doing this poster. We took turns sleeping. I'd sleep, Tim kept painting, he'd wake me up, and I'd paint, and he'd go to sleep. So we did that kind of like for literally 36 hours. Finished the painting and brought it back in. The robots, the droids weren't in the painting. They were not there. And I, and I said, look, you need something behind here in the background, well, you know. So I said, that big hairy guy, whatever he is, you know, will be cool back there. And they said, well, wait a minute, some guy goes off. I guess he called George Lucas, I'm not sure. And uh, they said, that's a good idea. They, he wants the, the droids in there, paint them in. So they went, ran up the street, got some paint for us, and we painted it in their shop. Painted, stuck the robots in there for, you know, you know, four or five hours. And the thing went off. So it was kind of like a fluke. It, it, it came more out of the fact that we were, we were able to pull a painting off overnight. They, and we also had the reputation for fantasy now because our Lord of the Rings calendars were out. So they combined that. John and Murray said, ah, those are the guys to get. So they made the decision, these two guys from the ad agency, to give us the poster. So that'll do it for this issue. Next time, Greg talks about his American beauties, Terry and the Pirates, and how the brothers tackled 158 Marvel masterpieces. For more information on Greg Hildebrandt, or to purchase some of his art, check out his website. Till next time, sayonara.